what's the single most important thing that you could do for your health that doesn't cost anything that we all have access to that research shows has positive effects on every single thing in your body from internal organ systems to mental disease to chronic disease it's sleep so that's the subject of today's podcast and we have some cool studies to share with you today's guest i have a friend that's working as a sleep coach at a mattress company right now so we're just going to pass along some information that's helped us in our lives some cool studies and some fascinating things that are going to completely change the way you are thinking about and participating in your sleep welcome to the crystal zen podcast i believe our bodies are a living map of the entire universe all the answers reside within. Remember, you are sovereign, whole, and infinitely valuable. And the best gift we can give to the world is our own healing. Join me as we explore holistic tools, spiritual practices, and paradigms that are shifting the way people experience life, business, and relationships. I love to share education on the most recent medical research and cutting edge technology on anatomy, neurology, trauma, development, and more to give us a foundation in understanding how to align, utilize, and upregulate our physical systems. Ultimately, this podcast is a witness and support to people on their journey of remembering and inspiration for all of us to keep going and a reminder that we are not alone. Welcome to the Crystals and Podcast. We're excited to have you here today. I have Tyler Higgins with me. Welcome, Tyler. Yeah, thanks for having me. This is fun. We did a, we did another event together a little bit earlier this month. Was it last month? Yeah, it was February actually. Yeah. Time flies. Yeah, and we talked a little bit about sleep then, and that was really cool. So I'm excited to dive deeper today. So thanks for being here. I do this at the beginning of each podcast where we just tune in and clear our minds. It's a time where our listeners can tap in if they haven't had any time for themselves today. So if you're in a place where it's safe to do so, go ahead and take a deep exhale. Close your eyes. And just start to feel on your inhale, your belly moves out and away from you. This allows us to access the deeper parts of our lungs. And then as you exhale, the belly gently presses back. Notice if that's easily accessible or not today. And just observe. Let the breath continue to move. And see if you can get your belly more and more relaxed on each breath. Start to notice the sounds around you and the ideas and the events that happened in the past or just before you tuned in as kind of noise or vibration outside or around your body. And notice that quiet down as you go deeper and listen more intently inside, maybe in your heart space or along your spine. Take a couple seconds there. And when you feel complete, take a final breath. Inhale and another sigh as you exhale. <sighs> and come back. Um, I want you guys to know that I met Tyler because my friend opened Snooze Mattress Company. And what are what is your title there? What are you doing for them? Yeah, so I'm a sleep coach. So when I'm in the store, I actually help people get onto the right mattresses. So what's mm -hmm. super cool about what we do is we actually use technology trusted by NASA and the Mayo Clinic, mm -hmm. and we custom fit people essentially for their beds. That's right, and, and that's so, what they did to me when I was there, and they yep. measured all those pressure points and things. Um, and that's when I was like, you you have such an interesting story, <laughs> and yeah. I want to know how you got here and like what's going on. Um, so I'll kind of let you tell us that, but um, you're originally from Liberty, Mississippi, which I didn't know this is a town of only 700 people. Yeah, it's pretty small. <laughs> you know, everybody knows everybody and uh, everybody knows what's going on in everyone's life in great detail. So <laughs> in great detail. That's amazing. Um, but you've always been an entrepreneur at heart, played sports and worked on cattle farms growing up there. Yep. Um, and the most important thing about you is your amazing wife. 
Yes, my amazing <laughs> wife, Becca, we've been married. We actually just celebrated our two year anniversary on the third of this month. Oh, and uh, she was, she's definitely my better half, so. That's awesome. Yeah. So tell us, um, what I loved about your story was texture that, you know, experience growing up and like what it was like in your family and how that kind of like led you uh, more broadly into the importance of health. Yeah, so, so growing up for me, um, yeah, so I mean, I grew up, like I said, in a little bitty town and played a lot of sports, so always being like in shape and exercising was like really a big part of my life. And even, I mean, working on farms, it's not easy work, right? And so you, you just have to, you have to be in shape and you have to use your body constantly. Yeah, farm strong. Yeah, it's a true <laughs> thing, it's a real thing. Um, and so for me, I think where it really turned for me, so like, you know, personal life here. So my, on my side of the family, so like my dad's side, there's only one guy out of his uncles and his dad that made it past 70 years before they passed away just because they all had like heart problems from, you know, just not living a healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, and then on my mom's side of the family, a lot of people deal with diabetes and my, like my grandpa had cancer several times. My mom actually passed away when I was 19 from pancreatic cancer. Mm -hmm. um, and so it just made me a lot more in tune with making sure that I'm doing the right things to be healthy because ultimately some of those things are genetically like passed down genes that you can't avoid completely. But if you're in a healthy state with your body, then you can deal with those when they come a lot better. And so that's kind of where I would say it took a real big turn for me in like making sure that I'm actively being healthy. Um, and there's just so many, so many simple things that you can do that helps you be healthier just in the, the choices you make every single day. Um, and, and especially like now that I'm working here at Snooze Mattress, like sleep is so important in our overall health and wellness. And it's, it's stuff that we can do super simple that we don't, some of it, you don't even have to go buy anything. You can literally just practice differently and make a new routine and it just makes a huge difference in your overall well being. I love that. I love that we got to geek out over that because what actually you guys, what I was doing at the event we did together was a yoga nidra meditation and sound bath on the mattresses, which was kind of cool because there's all this science behind like getting in theta brain waves and where you want to drop into in that meditation and then why and what frequencies you're using to restore the body. And so it, it, it's just a really cool thing to dive into. So I do think first, right off the bat, it would be important for us to just share this information because I believe education is one of the major ways that actually motivates people to make a change. Just like, oh, I didn't know, <laughs> right? Totally. So the stages of sleep we go through, um, we had geeked out a little bit about REM sleep and that's probably not new to anybody. You've heard of rapid eye movement and a lot of people I hear say something like, well, I didn't get enough REM sleep and so I know that that's what's causing all of these problems or probably what's catalyzing my stress and these unhealthy like habits. So I just wanna like broaden that information a little bit saying there's obviously two different kinds of sleep and generally we'll say REM sleep, rapid eye movement, or non-rapid eye movement. But in the non-REM sleep, there are four stages. So when we hear about stages of sleep, um, they will go from consciousness to less conscious via stages one, two, three, and four. So when I first encountered and dived into this stuff a little bit deeper was because of meditation, because we're saying, at what hurts do we see the brain entering these different stages and then which ones are beneficial for what. So when the onset of sleep happens, you do progress through those stages, one, two, three, four. But the thing me and Tyler were just talking about was during the first half of the night, what will actually happen is you will spend more time in those deep recovery stages of sleep, stage four, and less time in REM. So like logistically, when you're going through your sleep, I want you to think about your sleep program like this. You start falling asleep and we'll just like take an average, like the ideal of going to sleep at nine or 10, right? And then waking up at six. So if that's like a general snapshot of your circadian rhythm, 
um, then you would start stage one, two, three, four, and spend time there. But then you do pop back up into REM sleep, right? Yep. And then you go back down again. So the first half of the night, you're in deeper sleep longer, and those REM sleep periods are very short. Um, and then during the second half of the night, those deeper sleep stages are shorter, and you're, you pop up into REM for longer and longer and longer. So if you miss the first half of your sleep, you can't really make that up in the second half because you won't actually spend the time in that deep sleep. You will start in the second half and you'll spend more time in REM sleep. Yep. So that's just maybe, and there's more details there if you want, reach out to us and I'll tag a lot of studies in this podcast. But I just wanna kind of give you this overview of this is tied to your circadian rhythm. It doesn't start when you go to sleep. So if you decide to go to sleep at 3 a.m., you don't start at the beginning of your sleep cycle and spend more time in deep sleep. You've lost that recovery part of your sleep, right? Yep. So uh, maybe you can add to some of those cool things we we're talking about in REM sleep, and we'll tell you what happens there. Yeah, so REM sleep is is super important. I think the easiest way to, to paint this picture, because I'm not a doctor, just so everyone knows, but I was I was actually listening to a podcast um, with Matt Walker, who is a doctor that studies sleep, and he was talking about REM sleep, which is our sleep stage where we actually dream, and so that's a stage where our body can deal with the emotions that we're feeling. And in this study, he was saying, and I think this was super amazing, is that they had a group of people that had all experienced traumatic events. Some of them were dreaming about their traumatic event during those REM stages. And some of them weren't dreaming about those traumatic events. And the thing that was crazy is a year later when they came back, the ones that had been dreaming about their traumatic events were doing a lot better versus the ones that hadn't been dreaming about the traumatic events were still dealing with depression and feeling like they were still in those moments. Mm -hmm. And so that right there is just such a powerful thing to know that our REM sleep stage is where our body or our mind is actually going to help us deal with naturally those stresses that we're feeling through the different events that are going on in our life day to day. And so it's just an extremely important stage of sleep that it helps our body naturally relieve the stress that we have. It's kind of insane because if you think about how much money you spend on therapy and also just learn that you have access to like emotional and mental first aid in your second half of REM sleep, like, like our bodies will naturally repair themselves and heal and there's something to be said for knowing that now and thinking, wow, <laughs> well, how can I expand that out? The other thing I found was super interesting about REM sleep was that it after, okay, so I wrote this down so you guys know who it was. It's a Beth Clearman study out of Harvard that decided their findings said that the single most predictor of lifespan or longevity was REM sleep. So if people had that in deficiency, their lifespans were shorter. Yeah, and it was that. like the top of the list. It was number one. And the other thing they said, which you might find fascinating, and maybe you already know this, is it's critical for the cognitive functions and your aspects of learning and memory. So like you're in school full time right now and working full time right now. So and when we need that the most, those are the times we're the most stressed out and don't get it. Lately. I, I need to practice what I preach when it comes to sleep a little bit better than I do. And honestly, for me, that's like the first thing that goes when I need it. Like I think that it heals my brain. Like I'll stay up till 4 a.m. on a sewing project or like down an anatomy rabbit hole or watching a show because it feels like it's de-stressing me which is actually the exact opposite of what my body needs to heal and cure the things that are happening to me. And like my first thing I'll compromise is my sleep. I think it's just, you know, so the CEO of Snooze Mattress Company, Matt Smith, I remember the first time I met him, the, the two things that really stood out to me was one, I'm not selling mattresses, I'm selling sleep. Mm. But two, that in America, that sleep is like one of the most misunderstood things and the least educated things when it comes to like health and wellness that we actually know as a society and that's just the thing right it's like oh well, i have a you know i have a paper or a test i need to study for right i'm, I'm saying this just because i'm in school right now but it's you know the first thing you go to is what you're saying well i'll just stay up longer or i'll wake up extra early when yeah. ultimately like the sleep our sleep is something that we shouldn't compromise on yeah right? i like how you said education because i don't remember ever learning about sleep and health class maybe i did and i missed that day but i or at least it wasn't stressed is this important yeah, it's definitely not. And I think like 
just I think this is a good time to say this. We talked about it a little before. Is you know for me, I'm a big numbers guy, and numbers make sense. You know, from playing sports to even cattle farming, like numbers feed into everything and how it works to its best. The easiest way to think about it is that average adult should spend seven to eight hours a night asleep, which is a third of the year. There's besides your your full time job, there's nothing else that you do or spend time in as much as you should be in bed. And so investing time and the right things for your sleep is extremely important. This is actually really funny because I had this thought when I was listening to some of these experts this week and I was thinking, well, what's the trade off? Because if we spend more time in sleep and we get more years at the end of our life, um, is that worth it? Is it just a trade off? Um, and one of the experts I was listening to out at Berkeley was saying, the results are exponentially worth it actually because it's not just time but it's quality of life and health so listen so this is the other thing actually i wanted to mention that also happens in REM sleep um because it's sort of like a repairage for your emotional sensitivity and your mental sensitivity things will get filed away in your brain and it seems to make sense of like traumas and emotional things even you went through that day the other thing that happens is skin sensitivity. So it also seems to repair like your integumentary system. And so meaning the lack of that makes you more emotionally, mentally, and physically sensitive. Like the studies coming out of Berkeley are showing that actual physical feedback, um, it's making you more sensitive, which grates on your nerves, right? Um, right. The other things I thought were interesting were um, your growth hormones released for the majority, like a little bit over, but the majority of it is in that second half where the REM sleep is higher. Um, and that repairs a little bit of tissue and keeps your body fat low. And when you drink alcohol and use it before sleep, then there's a 50% drop in your growth hormone release in REM stages of sleep. So that's another thing to consider if you're using alcohol as a sedative, which actually doesn't help your sleep process. It shuts off the midbrain. It shuts off your cognitive function. So it's a sedative. It's not a sleep aid. Right. So it definitely inhibits that. And then your testosterone peak that um, deals with libido, tissue repair, well-being, that all is that REM sleep. Yeah, and then that predictor of longevity from the studies case. So that was kind of the list I wanted to rattle off. So that if you're listening, hopefully you're sort of pondering like I did when I started learning this information and how that pertains to yourself and like what's happening with you and what that quality of sleep is during the second half. Maybe we should go back to now, tag back to deep sleep and the benefits of your deep sleep. I know you mentioned that's a different kind of repair. Yeah, so your deep sleep is actually the cycle where your body actually repairs itself, like physically, it restores itself, right? And a big thing that we talk about all the time at Snooze is that we want to help people get deep, undisturbed, restorative sleep every single night. And it's just super important. And so like the deep stage, and I'm you know talking to all of you guys listening out there, if you've ever woke up before and you feel tired immediately, it's a pretty good chance you're not getting enough deep sleep. And so like me personally, when I first got an Apple Watch, I would wear it to bed. And I always felt tired. Like every morning when I wake up, I'm like, man, how am I tired? I literally just slept for like nine hours, right? Um, and so anyways, I would look and it was saying that I was getting like 40 minutes a night of deep sleep which if you guys don't know, doctor recommend it for adults is an hour and a half to an hour and 45 minutes of deep sleep. So I wasn't even getting half of that. And so deep sleep again is, is just extremely important because that's actually where our body restores itself physically. And you're gonna wake up and feel refreshed if you're getting enough deep sleep. And one big thing too, and I always talk to people about this when they're in our store is that, you know, to get good deep sleep, you need to be relaxed, your body, so that you can stay asleep. Right? So you don't have a interrupted sleep cycles. And so where we, where we custom fit people, it's all about getting them on the right sleeping surfaces, making sure that their spine's in perfect alignment, even down to the pillow. I mean, the pillow and the mattress make up about 30% of your spinal alignment. And so if you don't have the right things, you're not going to sleep good and you're not going to get enough deep sleep or REM sleep and you're just not going to feel good. It's fascinating, especially with all the sports you played, right? If your muscles and tissues aren't repairing themselves, in that deep sleep, then your capability 
is so is lessened right totally. just from that and i think like at least for me and i wonder what it is for you and for the people listening that i think that's the sleep i'm more willing to compromise is that beginning first couple hours of sleep staying up later and not getting that and um, the other thing that it says is besides musculature repair those first stages of deep sleep are blood pressure medication basically for you so autonomic dysfunction abnormal heart rate insulin regulation and metabolism blood sugar regulation so these are the biggest predictors of um, if you're pre-diabetic is deep sleep and also if you have high blood pressure is the deep sleep isn't that interesting yeah it's uh, i mean the easiest thing to say folks uh -huh. don't compromise your sleep <laughs> yeah you know especially if, if you're someone like me like you know growing up where you know my family did have a lot of health problems there was a lot of medicine that had to be taken to help with blood pressure or to help with diabetes or whatever it may be and the point is is i hate taking medicine like i just feel like it does just as much you know and again not a doctor here but <laughs> i feel like it does sometimes just as much bad as it does good sometimes yeah. and so knowing that our body can naturally take care of itself if we get good sleep is just a game changer yeah educate yourself and know how you can support your body's own processes I think it just gives us so much power back. And the studies coming out of Berkeley from the doctors are actually saying about every 90 minutes is when you do come back out or, or hit REM sleep again, and you will need to make a postural change, and that is good for your body. Most of those are not committed to memory in the sleep studies, um, but sometimes they are. And so that's something that they've really looked into is when you come back up and you need to make that postural change, what are the factors that are making you stay awake, right? Or commit them to memory versus not, and then, and then go back into the cycle. So you'll descend and you'll pop back up and you'll descend and you'll pop back up. One thing I was um, deep diving into was melatonin because a lot of people, that's like the number one monetary and popular industry for helping all naturally with sleep aid. But there's also been a lot of talk that I've heard about that not being good for you now. So when I deep dive into melatonin, I did find out for you guys that the process is melatonin is actually not helping you with sleep, but it's basically just the little flag that goes up and signals to you it's sleep time. Because melatonin is produced in your pineal gland and it's inhibited by light. So when you're outside and you're seeing the light, depending on where you live, <laughs> right, you may get more or less of a normal daylight time. As soon as the light starts going down, then your melatonin starts being released, like the floodgates are open, and it doesn't help you enter stage one. It doesn't help you go to sleep. It doesn't help you stay asleep. It actually doesn't help with anything during that whole sleep process me and Tyler have been talking about. But it basically is just the signal to your body to get ready, it's time. It's like the referee that comes out and blows the whistle and is like, hey, get ready, it's gonna be a jump ball, right? Yeah, and I've, you know, since work started and work it and being a sleep coach, I've looked into a lot of things, right? Yeah. And so, you know, personally, my experience with melatonin, I use it right after my mom passed away because I had a really hard time going to sleep and staying asleep. Mm. And the easiest thing that I recognized, it didn't make much of a difference except that I had like terrible dreams, which I know is a side effect for some people from that. <laughs> and so I, I quit taking it. But I've listened to different podcasts with different doctors and people that study sleep. And, and I, I, too, have heard it's really not that great of a thing to do if you're having trouble sleeping. There's, there's other underlying things that can be changed or could be problems mm -hmm. that you need to address, not just like, hey, let's just pop a melatonin, right? Yeah. And one of the simplest things, because like you're saying, it kind of throws up that flag and says, hey, it's time to get ready to go to bed. One of the easiest and simplest things people can do to help their body start to wind down is actually to dim their lights. So our bodies, our natural circadian rhythm, it knows those things based off of light, right? And so like, if we just dim the lights down just a little bit, you know, an hour before bed, we're going to get more sleepy just because our body's natural alarm clock, realistic or just clock, not alarm clock, is saying, hey, it's time to go to bed. And so ultimately, we can do that without actually, you know, taking a melatonin. Yeah, and Huberman puts out a lot of that kind of light stuff with those nerves in your eyes that are the receptors for like long light signals or frequencies versus short. And he's always saying in his studies, the best thing you can do is 
postpone your caffeine intake in the morning and go outside and watch the light start to brighten and the same thing at night, what you're talking about. And are there are there different kinds of light, right, that are that you shouldn't be doing right before bed? Yeah, so uh, any light coming from a screen, <laughs> the blue light, not good, right? And again, this is where I need to practice what I preach because I definitely am not good at this, but it's just not good for you. It just, yeah. it wires your brain and you're just more awake. And so ultimately trying to avoid that stuff for, you know, an hour or so before it's time for bed is really, really important. And I, I just had a thought on the fly, right? When yeah. you were saying that, because you're talking about like going outside. I And maybe I'm just, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm a weirdo, but... I think the best I sleep and the times I can say, man, I always slept great is when I go camping, right? Oh. And the reason I think about that is because, well, the sun wakes me up in the morning, which is the most powerful light that you can get. And the sun sets in the evening and I get sleepy, right? And so anyways, again, just thinking about the natural side of it is, you know, light makes a big difference. And so if we're controlling the light within our homes, mm -hmm. and especially like you said, I mean, some areas, I mean, here in Utah, for instance, during the winter, we get very minimal light, right? But we can control that with the, you know, just having lights that you can dim down, so. You're right, I think you're right, and that is powerful, and maybe it's just because when we're camping or when we're doing that, none of it is synthesized. We're just, we're just participating with our body and the signals as close to nature and the natural circadian rhythm as we can, and so that's just gonna provide that optimum, like, execution of the sleep totally. process. Yeah, and, they were also saying if sleep from an evolutionary standpoint was not necessary, then we would have evolved out of it somehow. And my mind was like, oh, that's kind of a cool thought because we are always evolving and getting better, but there's something about these stages in this process that is so essential that we can't evolve ourselves out of it or figure out a way to outsource it. Like it's still such a, Totally. imperative thing for all mammals yeah it's extremely important and, and like you said i mean that's a great thought you know if we haven't figured out how to go without it to this point in humanity probably not gonna figure it out okay i think we need to talk about caffeine real quick before okay. you know we end this because what an important thing with sleep i looked up caffeine's half-life do you know what it is I listened to a podcast a couple weeks ago on this, and I'm pretty sure that it's 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 long enough that if you drink like a cup of coffee in the morning, that it'll still be in your system like middle of the the night. It, yeah, it's like four to six hours is the half life, which makes ten to twelve hours the quarter life. Which makes if you go, I want it out of my system, and you need to count back to your last caffeinated drink. It needs to be like. 10 to 12 hours so if you're going to bed at 10 then you need to not drink caffeine after 10. so if you're like waking up and delaying your caffeine so you can do it naturally with the sunlight you have a small window for your caffeine and yeah. i don't know how you're going to get school done and, <laughs> and driving back and forth to work you can only have caffeine between like 9 and 10 a.m yeah i just <laughs> it's not how i'm living my life right now yeah, I, I don't know. I've I've had I've had my ups and downs with caffeine, you know. Have I you? I've like I did energy drinks a lot when I actually did door to door just because it's a long days and you get exhausted. Yeah. And finally I'm just like, man, this just there's gotta be a better way, right? And that's yeah. where it's like overall health and wellness and just making sure you're exercising enough, making sure you're getting the sleep that you need. Like your body your body's it's a it's amazing what it can do. And yeah. ultimately like not knocking on caffeine, not saying don't do it. I know I have plenty of friends and I still drink caffeine here and there. My wife was actually getting onto me the other day because I drank a Red Bull, right? Like, it's like, I can't believe you did that. It's so not good for you. <laughs> and I'm, uh, I was like, yeah, I know, I'm sorry. But the, the point is, is there's just so many things that we can do naturally that's gonna boost our energy throughout the day. And sleep is probably one of the easiest things we can control mm -hmm. that I mean you don't have to I mean ultimately there's so many things that go into it yeah maybe you need a, a newer mattress maybe you need blackout curtains or a better pillow or maybe you need to you know have a run your maybe you need to run your air conditioner more and have a cooler you know sleeping environment I mean a lot of people don't know this but optimal temperature for sleeping is 65 to 68 that most people especially like here in the winter time I feel like most people leave their heat on during the night and it's like you really need to kick it off Ultimately, you need to be cool, right? There's so many simple things, though. I mean, 
like we've talked about, we talked about light. There's just so many different things you can do that are super simple. I mean, even like just the sound machine helps out. It helps block out noise from the outside that might disturb you and wake you up, right? Mm -hmm. Having the, the right temperature is what I was trying to say. Um, and then, you know, one thing that I found recently that I actually have and have been using that makes a huge difference in getting up in the morning is a sunrise alarm, alarm clock. Cause like me and my wife currently. What is that? So it's, it's an alarm clock. Like mine is probably about like this big. Uh -huh. And basically you set your alarm for a time and you can set it to where it'll actually start to mimic the sunlight. And so like 10 minutes before my alarm's actually going to go off, it starts to brighten up the whole room. So from a light and so it's you know kind of like your your ring here for your camera like yeah. they have ones that are just like that and they're sunrise alarm clocks and basically they just wow. start to slowly brighten the room before your alarm goes off so that you're not like i'm sure all of us have that moment where the alarm goes off and we're like oh like you like because you were really asleep hard but by having that light it starts to tell our body again that circadian rhythm it's hey it's time to get up like you need to wake up Wow, that's super cool. I noticed that I was getting jolted when I had to stay on a schedule a few years ago. So I got the app Sleep Cycle and put it by my head and it would pick up via your breathing patterns and you'd have to give it a window. Like I'd have to give it a 30 minute window and it would pick in that window when my sleep cycle was rising back up so that it didn't wake me up in a deeper cycle. And that, at least even though it may have been like not as well as the light, some sort of like pseudo sort of like mocking a, a, like a natural circadian rhythm wake up, it felt better For sure. because you didn't get the jolt. Um, and I did wanna say like some, you guys are probably noticing, we've noticed it, one always begets the other, like it becomes a negative feedback loop or a positive feedback loop. So when you're tired, obviously you're taking more caffeine and then when you get to the end of the night, you're more tired and so you're compensating for that. But if you can switch it to the positive, you probably alleviate a lot of the needs and the symptoms if you're orchestrating your sleep better. Um, the thing that actually happens, which I think is fascinating, which we might wanna share, is how caffeine actually is working, is it's blocking your adenosine receptors. So this is what I think was such a powerful mind shift is the more you're awake and the more you're doing just biological, um, byproducts of being of your systems working and um, one of them is adenosine and so it will build up it's just like your car will have those natural fumes like the more you run it right so the more something's on the more like kind of the gunk or the things or the toxicity builds up and needs to be cleaned or alleviated right or reset so that's actually what's happening in your body so the more you're studying and using your brain and doing the things that, that adenosine is a byproduct of combustion in your neurons. So it's a natural process by which the more you're doing, it's going up and up and up and up. These levels are rising in your body and those receptors are picking those up. And when they're picking up more of them at a faster rate, it's just signaling to your body that you're getting closer and closer to sleep time. You're getting more and more tired because you need to cleanse the system. So caffeine sits in the place of the adenosine receptor and it doesn't activate it or deactivate it, it just blocks it. It's just like the goalie. So when these things are building up in your body naturally, all it's doing is just numbing your body to um, understanding the effects of how tired you are. So when we talk about the caffeine crash, that's because when the caffeine uh, you know, has its half-life or whatever it is done and releases itself from those receptors, you get like this tidal wave because it that's in your body. And then while you were taking caffeine, the adenosine that built up, you know, during that time was in your body. So you just get this crash, right? Right. Of like, oh, you know, we've had our eyes closed and now your body's like, wait, what was going on? Okay, it's time to sleep, crash. And unfortunately, um, it doesn't give you better sleep because some people like the crash, but quality is as important as quantity, Correct. which is now when you're going through your cycles, they're not, they're not optimal. It's actually, I, I don't know, like it's tough to talk about caffeine because I think a lot of us are so dependent on it and it's so prevalent, but we're like Tyler said, we're not saying do it or don't do it. We're not telling you what to do or labeling anything good or bad. But now that you know some of these things, what are you contemplating on? It's, it's human nature that we always 
I think we prefer first to, uh, you know, find things that back up what we're doing, right? We don't want to, change can be scary, right? And so, uh, you know, just, I hope that the things that you've talked about today, Crystal, I hope that it sparks, you know, the curiosity of the listeners to say, hmm, is there things that I could easily do to let my body naturally heal itself emotionally and physically through deep restorative sleep? Yeah, I love that. I'm going to be a little chatty and I want to leave you guys with one more thing because you guys know um, all my yoga and energy work and chakra stuff I really love. So we're going to we're gonna go over into this world a little bit and this isn't completely that. This is Chinese medicine. This is Ayurvedic stuff. Um, I actually have a guru if you're interested. Uh, reach out and I'll, I will give you her info. She's 80 years old and has been doing this for her entire life and has 12 kids. That's awesome. And she teaches me a lot about um, these meridian points and very specific Ayurvedic cycles. So listen to this, you guys. During, remember how we said you can't really make up the sleep when you lose it because it happens according to your circadian rhythm at a certain time of night or day. Um, so this is what's actually happening in your body. These are the systems that are turning on and then turning off at different times. So from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m., um, they call this the triple burner. This is related to your heart and pericardium. And the emotions here are joy or lack of joy, depression, and hopelessness. So that's really early on in the night. Um, the functions uh, is related to your endocrine and lymphatic system, and it controls metabolism within your body. The symptoms of imbalance or guilt, depression, adrenal fatigue, hormone imbalance, sluggish metabolism, headache, swollen lymphatic system, fibromyalgia, thyroid disorder. And the tips are consider going to bed earlier. So establishing your calm nighttime routine where you avoid artificial light, all the things Tyler told you, uh, starting at 9 p.m. So that is just when your body processes for these health functions are happening, like whether you like it or not, right? And that's where I said, that's my most likely to compromise time of my sleep actually. So 11, 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. is your gallbladder, which is strongly tied to your liver health. Um, the emotion is indecisiveness um, and your gallbladder, we probably know, stores and excretes bile for your digestion and controls the sinews and tendons. It actually governs your dreams when you're talking about your dreams. And then the tips are avoid alcohol and fatty or spicy foods. So this one's a lot about snacking before bed. From 1 a.m. to 3 a.m. is your liver. And that emotion deals with anger and irritability. And your liver is responsible for detoxifying your body, processing emotions. It stores your blood and governs your chi of your body. It's also associated with tendons, nails, and eyes. And then we'll go to the last part of the night. So basically, from 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. is your lungs. And then the emotion stored there is sadness and grief and that governs your respiratory system and your immune system and it regulates your sweat glands and moistens the skin. So I did just wanna you know, pose some of those questions in your mind when Tyler mentioned temperature and stuff as well. So if there's some irregulation or dis-ease or any kind of like things going on there, the most important time for you is 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. And they actually suggest breathing exercises or meditation or things like that. I want to know if you have any last thoughts and if you want to tell us about what's going on down at the mattress company or anything you want to leave. Yeah, so us. so one thing I, I thought about when you were talking about some of this stuff, because I know you really were interested in this, and I'm sure a lot of your <laughs> listeners would be. So Tempur-Pedic has um, their Pro Smart Base, which has basically to sum it up super simply it's it's an amazing base that does so much for helping you know what's going on with your health and wellness through your sleep so there's sound there's a sound system on it so you know this is contrary to the don't watch tv or anything like that right before bed because you could use it as a sound system but the more important part is it has sound wave massages mm -hmm. and so there's a massage that helps you wind down and relax and help your body circulate better but there's like five different frequencies that deal with things such as migraines, back pain, arthritis, symptoms of insomnia or sleeplessness. Like there's a bunch of these frequencies that one, the base actually sends those sound wave frequencies through the mattress to help you get into a better state with whatever you're dealing with. But the other thing that I really like is it actually has a sleep tracker system built into it. So like we've talked about temperature, um, we didn't really talk about air purity or humidity, but the base tracks all that. So you can see on your phone 
the temperature of the room when you're in bed, the air purity, the humidity in the air. There's just so many wow. things that it tracks. It has a, so it has a smart wake system actually in it. So that time window you were talking about earlier, like it knows when you're in a light sleep stage and it gives itself a window to wake you up. And there's several ways it could do that, whether it's playing music through the phone app or actually send some vibrations through the bed to wake you up. But like, it's just incredible. Like the, the point of what I'm trying to say to the listeners is that the technology that is in the sleep industry right now yeah. is game changing. Yeah, it's, and it's like you can orchestrate or create something through, you know, that journey, just the optimal space for our bodies to heal ourselves. And it feels good and we're asleep doing it. I just think it's just kind of a mind blowing concept and just a mind blowing, I think, totally. sort of information and podcast we're doing today because it's like, whoa. Yeah. So for, for anyone out there, the reason I'm called a sleep coach is because I'm there to coach you through these things and help you get the right sleeping sanctuary set up. Not because um, you'll come over and be there all night and be like, all right. Yeah, I don't, I don't do any of that. You know? <laughs> I, I, I have to get paid for that. But anyway, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but just so you guys do know, for those listening, we do have a March Madness event that's going to be going on during the March Madness tournament. And so basically, people can fill out a bracket through ESPN. It'll be in a group that's made by us. And the winner can actually win a free queen size mattress or use a credit for what the mattress would have been in the store towards a different purchase. And we're gonna be doing discounts on all the sleeping accessories. So like sunrise alarm clocks, white noise machines, humidifiers, diffusers, those kind of things. We're gonna be running a deal on those during March Madness. We're calling it the March Madness by Mar Mattress Madness event. <laughs> so uh, anyways, it's gonna be super fun, but if anybody has any questions, please don't hesitate to reach yeah. out and talk to us. And can they come, so if you're a local, Tyler's at the one in Pleasant Grove, right? Yep. But and they can also come and get that dream mapping you did for me for free, right? Correct. Yep. So basically the, the few steps that we walk through when someone comes in is we dream map them, which is where we test you to see all the pressure points in your body. And that it, it custom fits you for the perfect sleeping surface for your unique body dynamics. And then we talk about any sleeping challenges they're having and how we can overcome those. We'll talk about lifestyle bases, which is just having a base that can adjust there's a ton of health benefits in that that we didn't even really get into today and then we talk about spinal alignment and how important that is and then lastly we have a sleep environment so that's yeah. the the simpler things that you can do that's cool as an anatomy person that was mind-blowing to me too because it's like of course people would have different shapes and pressure points and like yep. yeah well that was really fun well thank you for coming today tyler and thank you for like just educating yourself on all the things and being willing to share them and share a little bit about your personal story. Of course. Thank you yeah. so much for having me. I'm glad to come. I'm an yeah. open book, so anyone can always ask questions. I love <laughs> it. And um, I'll tag our Instagram so you can get a hold of us as well, like in the show notes, or just reach out if you have more questions and want to get a hold of Tyler. So I think that is it. Thank you. Namaste. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Connect with me on Instagram at Crystal Zen Yoga. Subscribe on my website at crystalzenyoga.com to receive tools and practices for your holistic journey and to be the first to know about offerings, workshops, trainings, and retreats. We live in powerful times that require courage, bravery, compassion, authenticity, community, and grounding. You're not alone. Check out my free content, classes, and meditations on YouTube under Crystal Zen Yoga and have a beautiful day. Satnam.